Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Amherst Planning Board meeting for Wednesday, December 4th, 2019, 7 p.m. Town Room Town Hall. It is 7.05, and we'll start. The first item is minutes. Chris, I believe we don't have any minutes. We don't have any minutes tonight. We apologize. Great. We had four meetings in October, so we're catching up. Yeah, don't apologize. We're, we're not, like, really emotional. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, number two, public comment period. Uh, I don't think we have any of that. There's no one here. Uh, number three, public hearing, site plan reviews and special permits. 7.05, it is... 705 SPR 2020-04 Enterprise Rent-A-Car 213 College Street request site plan review approval to install a carport structure 14 feet by 20 feet at the rear of the building map 14B parcel 243 com zoning district. So um, I believe you gentlemen are here for that. If you want to come forward, settle yourselves in, make sure that the green lights are on your mic. You have to push the button if they're not on. And then please introduce yourselves. Uh, <clears throat> Kevin Colstead, I'm with Enterprise Rent Car. One address to or? Oh, no, your uh, okay. organization that you're representing, that's fine. And, RJ Okay, great. Welcome. And did we get, we have those names, I assume. Yes. Great. Um, so I will, uh, are there any board disclosures? And I'm actually going to back up. I read the SPR, but it, this is in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A. This public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and this hearing is being held for the purpose of providing an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard. Um, so are there any board disclosures? No, none. Um, so we're gonna have the applicant's presentation, which uh, I see you brought um, poster. Do you need to put anything on the screen or are you okay? I think so. Okay. Great. And we did get stuff in our packet on this, so if you're referring to a document, we probably have it. Yeah, I think what I'm showing on this board is pretty much what you have in your package anyway. I just felt like I should bring something. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, the only thing you don't have in the package, I think, is the um, eviction on the car port itself, which I, I did put. Actually, you might actually have that in the package, but I did put a, a couple of uh, front view and side view of the for, um, so I, I'm just going to do a quick explanation of what the, the reason for this is and the purpose, and then you know, we can go from there with questions. So <clears throat> currently, Enterprise Rent Car operates at 213 College Street. We've been there for a number of years, um, renting cars to the, the public in Amherst. Uh, and one of the processes we do before we rent a car is prep and clean. Um, we don't wash the cars on site here, we do that off site at, at probably one of the local car washes, but here we do vacuum, clean the windows, windows etc. Uh, in the rear of this lot area. So currently there is no structure there um, when it rains and snows, etc. So that's essentially what we're looking to do is create a structure where when they um, pull the cars into this area, they vacuum and they uh, clean the windows, etc. They're at least covered from the um, rain and no, that's, that's generally why we're here and what we're looking to accomplish today. Great, thank you. Um, could I have someone volunteer to give the site visit? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Thank you, um, Michael. We uh, visited the site this morning at 9 o'clock and observed uh, the area behind uh, the uh, building, uh, where, where, which is uh, uh, outlined in, the, in green on our, uh, on our maps. Um, noticed, noticing that it was a, a paved area and uh, free of any encumbrances at this point, uh, with the exception of a, a light that is on the back wall there, uh, which will be apparently not in the way of the uh, of the structure as it's, as it's designed to be put up. 
Um, there appear to be there's, there appears to be plenty of room uh, for the structure, uh, and it will not be seen. It 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 cannot be seen from any point on College Street, so it will be completely oblivious to um, uh, those in town who are passing by. Um, uh, the only thing we couldn't determine was exactly how uh, much area there was on the parking lot because there was a fair amount of snow piled up on the parking lot <laughs> this afternoon this morning. Uh, and, but I'm, I'm looking at the, at the map and it appears to be uh, satisfactory. So we saw no real problems uh, with the proposal uh, on, at the on-site visit. Thank you. Um, who else attended the site visit? Maria. And Maria, that's it. Do you have anything to add, Maria? That's it. Um, Chris, I have a question for you first. Just um, so, what are what is it about this that we should be concerned about or be analyzing? Well, it's a change in the site, and the building commissioner thought it was more than a de minimis change in the site. It is a structure that's being put up. It's not just a an air conditioner or a vent pipe or something like that. So he really wanted it to go to the planning board for approval rather than taking it upon himself to approve it administratively. And to have the public um, be able to come if they saw fit, but apparently okay. they don't see fit. Because it basically kind of looks like a giant awning. Um, is it a temporary structure? Or or well, like, will it be ever taken down, or does it just you put it up and you'll just leave it up? It could come down if it needs it. That's not permanent, so we need it for whatever reason. That's not where it can't come down, but it will be there for the future. So you use it until it, because I'm sure it a price of fifteen hundred dollars. It's only going to last like so many years, and then you'd probably want to put another one up. I just want to make sure, like, they wouldn't have to go through this again, would they? I think if they put the same thing up and it's, you know, pretty similar, um, that the building commissioner wouldn't have them come back to you. So that, yeah. Really? I might do this as an addition on my house. That's <laughs> like bang for your buck. Well, and that's great, but it's also good to know that if, you did have it, like, I don't know, snow fell on it or dented or whatever you could sure. replace. I, yeah, good. Does any, the board have, um, anyone else have questions? Okay, David? Uh, how, it's not taller than the roof of the building, is it? And what's behind, what's behind the uh, Towers College, isn't it? Uh, the property owner behind it? I don't think so. I think it's a house. Yeah. I'm not sure. But it's, there's no, there's no, it's, it's just what like trees, there, what are there? Yeah, it's yeah, right? there. There's no residence, there's nothing. I'm just going to look in there and be, well, they've got a shape. Thank you. And, and no, it's not part of the building. Close. <laughs> it says uh, peak height, 8 feet, 9 inches, so it's not very tall. Um, oh, Janet, thank you. I, I had two questions. One was about how it's anchored into the ground, I'm thinking maybe if there's like a heavy windstorm, it might get lifted. And the other question is how much clearance is there between when people are driving behind the building, between them and the parked car cars, like how wide is that lane? So between the canopy where you can drive and the parked cars. Yeah, we took measurements before we went through the process, and so it's not going to go outside of where that and then how how do you anchor it is it just that's just ground right so it is A lot of times these are these are center blocks or something to weigh them down. Um, so, so I don't know the, the fourth point, if we need to anchor that or not, we'll look at that. The other three points will be anchored to the building. So if 
chances of it moving would be so you know, hard to you know, change that happen. Any other questions? Um, any comments from the public on this? So I don't think there's a whole lot more. It's an SPR, so how do we handle this? So you could make a motion to close the public hearing to approve the application and to find that it um, meets the relevant criteria of section 11.24 of the zoning bylaw. 11.24. Did anybody get that? Anyone? Uh, I so move. Yeah. <laughs> Second. Um, is there any other discussion, questions, issues? Um, I see none, so I think we're ready. To, Chris, anything else? Uh, do you want to place any conditions on it? I'm not saying, suggesting that you need to, but if you wanted to, this would be the time. Well, I would just say that, that they, you know, the car washing operations don't. Uh, take place there. I'm just looking at the pavement. It doesn't. It doesn't look to be paved entirely through that area, or or not, because th <laughs> this looks paved, and that doesn't. This looks paved, and that does not. <laughs> oh, so it, it, it is point. paved now. Paved. Okay. But but still. There shouldn't be car washing there without, you know, control of the, the runoff. Okay, with that, um, all in favor? I see unanimous. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's past 7, 15, 7, 18, we'll say, and we're going to continue the hearing for Riverside Organics, SPR 2020-03, Jonathan Grafine, Grafine, I see, sorry. Riverside Organics, 555 Belchtown Road, Request site plan review approval to construct and operate a marijuana product manufacturer and marijuana micro business under section 3.363.5 of the zoning bylaw map 18D parcel 2 PRP zoning district. This public hearing is being continued from November 6, 2019 and November 20th, 2019. So welcome back. We got everything. Sorry, think, hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. We got everything from your flash drive in our packet. Yes. So if you have anything um, new you want to update us on, um, I see that we have um, some plans or guidelines that a little packet of a bunch of plans, uh, like a, a diversity plan, uh, standard operating procedures. Right, there are many, uh, actually, I had produced those just knowing the general, then the CCC doesn't allow, a license doesn't allow you to proceed forward until you finish certain previous uh, levels of the application, so, Actually, since I gave that to you, I've produced more of those. Mm. I don't think you're going to be interested in them. They're just operating <laughs> procedures of, you know, all the various, uh, you know, down to every detail of the operation, which the CCC is concerned with. And I think they really just want to make sure that the operators are aware these things are necessary. Um, with that being said, um, if you'd like them, by all means, I'll give them to you um, or have them emailed to you. Uh, since last meeting, um, there were a few issues that I had to take care of. Um, 
One was speaking with the fire, or having, having I had spoken with the people at the fire, Mike Roy and uh, Jeff, his supervisor. Um, I believe they were supposed to write a letter, which I requested him do to Ms. Brestrup, which I'm assuming from her nod is confirmation. Um, there's an issue of the storm water runoff calculation. My civil engineering engineer is being very strange about giving me that calculation. I don't know why. Um, I went and spoke to the town engineer. He said that it doesn't really matter. I know the property. It's all downhill into a wetland, but give it to me anyhow because I have it for all the other properties in town. So with that being said, I still have to find someone to do me those calculations. I was told a civil, I, I, what is your experience? You're a civil engineer. What is your experience? Is calculations for stormwater runoff done by a civil engineer? Or a hydrology person. Right, because I asked my guy and he says, well, we normally don't do that. And everyone else is telling me, I, so I'm like pulling teeth with, I, I He so, may not, oh, but that, he right. should know someone who does. Right, that's what I figured. It's a very, seems like it would be a very simple standard. So that's just one thing which back? I could, take care of and <laughs> not me personally. So where is the status of that? I'm, I'm sorry, Christine, did you want to? <coughs> yeah. So I think you received a letter from Ward Smith, which um, was related to the Conservation Commission review. Um, this might have been in your previous packet. Um, and Ward Smith was the wetlands um, expert who looked at the wetlands on the property and produced a wetlands <laughs> report for the CONCOM. And he stated that there wasn't any new impervious uh, area on the site. And so um, he felt that the runoff pre and post development would be the same. The building is being placed on an area that's already paved. So he didn't envision that's that true. there would be any uh, issues with runoff. And I think verbally I heard the same thing from the town engineer. We don't have anything in writing, but he told me that he didn't envision there would be any problems. And he said that, excuse me, he said also to be positive that I'm using the 2,100-gallon uh, uh, rain recovery. So he said that's even better. And he said, so the, the whole issue is the impact of stormwater on the sewer systems of the town. So he said there won't be any, basically, because it's all going into the wetlands anyhow, or used by me. Jack? Yeah, so uh, there would actually be a net decrease in the runoff uh, based on the design, uh, just from hmm. a general sense. So. Minor. Minor. Yeah, I would say the same. I would agree the same thing. I think it would be the size of the property and the whole aggregate area, I think it would be minimal, you know, impact of water. So, Chris, do we get something from the town engineer saying it's okay? And also, is there anything on the septic? I don't know if they're tied into the town. Yeah. So I believe um, Mr. Griffin was going to have a Title V uh, study done okay. on the septic system. I don't think he's had that done yet. Um, and tying into the, the sanitary system that's there is challenging because of two things. One is the closest tie-in would be on um, the abutter's property, and the abutter has stated that he doesn't support this development. So that's one thing. And then the other possible tie-in is up on Belchertown Road, which is a far distance away, and it's uphill. So the best bet is to have the Title V um, study done and be able to use that septic system, but we don't have that information yet. So you could ask Mr. Griffin what his plans are for getting that study done. Did you have a Title V when you bought it done? No, actually, when I bought well, you know, there for certain years there was no history in the town and no coats. I bought the property um, for cash, so there was no Title V oh, done. Right. Now, when I bought it, the itinerary stated city sewer because whomever changed back whenever, who knows what happened, said it was city sewer. I bought it thinking sewer, and the town told me, the health department jumped on me, they're like, listen, you got a, all your runoff has to go to uh, the city sewer, it can't go to your septic, if you have one, and I, well, no, excuse me. 
We found out I didn't, wasn't hooked up to the city sewer. And then we went through this whole research of it's not realistic to hook up. Then I found that I have a septic. Then they said you have to hook up to a tight tank. Without get down to the, down, without clearing it up, I have to put a tight tank for the greenhouse and I have to get a Title V from my existing septic, which is in good order. I just have to get it examined and re, whatever. You think it's in good shape? Well, I examined it with one of the professionals from town, uh, Mike Stowes, and he, it was all clear and clean and f fine. He's not licensed for that. He was just potentially going to be doing work for me. Um, I have to go through it with uh, Mr. Smith, yeah. all the proper procedures. So in permitting and the whole procedure over the next eight months to a year, whatever it's going to be, that will all be taken care of in due time. Jack. Uh, I don't recall the tight tank is for just runoff within the greenhouse. Yes, sir. The DEP was requiring that any uh, um, water or any uh, uh, condensation or anything from a greenhouse mm -hmm. needs to go into either a tight tank and pumped out or into the city, wait, was it in the city sewer? I think it, the city sewer was okay, yeah. You cannot have it go into a septic, but you can have it go into the city sewer. Hmm. Because it's not realistic, it was too far, there were problems. Even if Mr. Hall had given me permission, there were too many, the, the city couldn't even get into the manholes because they were so old and stuck and who knows what. There was too many issues. Basically, it's like I'm going to be putting a 1,500-gallon tank for the greenhouse right under. Remember the issue you thought there was, there was a picture there where you thought it was in the way? That's actually underground, that tight tank, what you thought was in the way of the passage. That's the tight tank, which you could see. Um, where are we? Uh, yeah, I, I recall. Don't know, don't know, don't know, uh, right there, that square box where the cursor is, that's the tight tank, which is underground which was your concern was in the way. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's 1,500 grounds, and that's all gonna be runoff right from the greenhouse right into there. The toilets and a wa hand washing sink, because all I have is two toilets, two existing, a male, female bathroom in the, in the house, and a uh, not installed yet is, you know, in permitting, it'll be a, a, a hand washing sink. That'll go into the septic, which is uh, underground in the back of the house back here. So I was wondering, so the tight tank, is it going to be monitored in terms of water level uh, well, there's electronically an alarm. or like there, there's an annual alarm on it. or monthly inspection or how well, you Well, there's it? an alarm on it and it tells you like before it gets filled. So you, you either you, a lot of people in the industry are actually re-cleaning the water with reverse osmosis, um, which I think is a good idea. I mean, obviously, uh, I'm going to be cleaning the town's water, and when I spoke to the people in the DPW and I spoke to them about even discharging it back into the sewer system, they said, yes, yeah, not a problem because the amounts, and all I'm doing is cleaning town water, so what am I really going to be cleaning out of there? Not a lot. Um, but with that being said, I pump it, it all goes into the tight tank. Any condensation or water from dehumidifiers or any of the such goes into the tight tank. And then I can either have it pumped out by a company every whenever and uh, monthly, bi-monthly. It's probably going to be every few months because I, I don't believe that I'm going to be producing more than five gallons a day. And at a 1,500-gallon tank, that's already three months. So um, that should suffice. I'm assuming. And there's an alarm on it. It tells you there's an alarm which, you know, lets you know before it overflows or whatever the case is. Uh, Chris, just a question. I hope is Title V all works out easy, but tying in, a, I assume that medical building has town sewerage and it runs down Hall Place and ties into a line there. He couldn't tap in at that fork? So Hall, Drive is Our a private drive. road, mm -hmm. and I believe it's owned by Mr. Uh, Gordon Hall. 
Oh. So Mr. Griffin has the you know, ability to pass and repass over the road, but there's nothing that says he has the ability to tie into that sewer line. So not I haven't seen right anything. Away? I That's have not, not a right seen, of way issue? I have not seen anything that um, says he can tie into that sewer line, nor do I think he would want to because it's uphill and he'd have to have a pump right. to pump it up. So right. his first you know, choice would be to have the septic system. So you could, if you chose to approve him, his site plan application, you could um, make a, a condition that he have the Title V study done, um, you know, have a septic system that is operational and meets um, state and local requirements, and that has to be done before the certificate of occupancy or something like that. So that would be a way of handling this. You do have to, one of the findings that you're supposed to make um, during the review of 11.24 is that it's got adequate sewage disposal. So, right. you know, I've been kind of dogging this question for a while with the health department and with Mr. Gerfine and trying to get some answers. The last time I talked to the health department, they said they thought if he had the Title V and whatever improvements needed to be made before the certificate of occupancy, that would probably be reasonable. <coughs> but he's not going to get a certificate of occupancy unless he has that. And it sounds so difficult for a tie-in that even if the Title V showed problems, then you the choice would be to upgrade that system or repair it or put new parts in. Right. I mean, at one point, the town said to me, you must hook up to the sewer. We're not asking. You must. So I was looking at a $30,000 extra in fees, which I had to swallow. And then I brought in Mike Stowe's to check it out. And the town told Mike, and Mike looked himself and was in contact with them. They said, forget it. We can't even get in there. Even if Mr. Hall gives a permission, anyhow, forget it. It's not even realistic. So then we had to go back to just make sure your septic is good and do a tight tank. Now, in relation to the septic, if you think about wh who and what's being used there, remember, it, it, I examined it myself. It looks very clean and good in working order. Obviously, it has to be checked by uh, right. a, 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 a professional. With that being said, remember, this is a two or three man operation. This is not a huge amount of people there. It's two bathrooms. There's no showers. There's no kitchen. It's really in all reality, it's going to be extremely minimal, you know, uh, in all respects, so. No, thank you. So hopefully, when do you expect to have this Title V done? I'm, I'm, obviously, I'm just, I'm not even doing it now. But obviously, it's winter now. It's not really right. to do it now. But um, I was waiting for all these things to go through all the procedure with the city. I'm in contact with Mr. Smith for a few months now about the whole issue. He knows that he gave me an order to perform right away. He knows that I had to wait because of permitting, et cetera. So he knows that I'm waiting to go through the permitting and application with the town. Once I get the blessing from you people, then I will go back and do all the proper, proper step by step by step. The greenhouse won't be done until the spring or even the foundation. So for now, I'm just going to be doing the electrical and security in the house, the insulation, the drywall, and then um, along with that at the same time, the, the toilet and the bathroom and whatever we can as soon as possible. So your condition makes a lot of sense. I would want to review that condition with the town, uh, with the building commissioner, and um, that would be among many conditions that you might want to place on this on this project. Um, I did give you a list of conditions that you can review later on. And again, I have not reviewed this list of conditions with the building commissioner, so I would suggest that we review them here, and then you tell me if you want to add or delete anything, and then I will review them with the building commissioner and then come back to you at the next meeting with, um, with a complete list. In addition to that, you're going to have to make findings, and there are findings related to um, the marijuana use, but there are also findings related to Section 11.24, and I have not had a, ch a chance to draft those findings yet. So that would be another thing that I could bring back to you on um, December 18th. 
the findings and that um, the one about the Title V, that hasn't been drafted, so you'll add that one in the, okay, I'm just gonna make a note. Um, does anyone else have any other questions at this point? No. It is, yep. Do you want to just flip through the um, development application report, which we put on your desk, just to make sure that there aren't any other issues that you want Mr. Gerfine to respond to um, before he comes back to you the next time? I noticed the number three, the, the sign plan. Um, it says the applicant is not proposing any signage at this time, but I think at the last meeting, there's gonna be a kind of what the next line says, issues to consider the warning signage. I think he is gonna do some of that. Yeah, Ms. Chow had brought that up, that we had said that uh, I was gonna put whatever, you know, cameras and no trespassing, et cetera, et cetera, the type of signs. Add that to the list of conditions. Yeah, move yeah. it into the, yeah. Any other areas people see? Oh, go ahead, Janet. So um, I was interested in the, um, the memo from Michael Roy about the carbon dioxide canisters um, and, you know, having um, carbon dioxide monitors in the facility, in the, in the growing part. And so is that going to be part of your plan? or we can put that in the order of conditions too. Yeah, we have, we, well, there are, mo there are systems in there and gauges which are monitor everything. I'm gonna have extra, like the system itself tells you what I'm gonna have around just to make, to back up basically to gauge, no pun intended, to gauge against each other, you know, the uh, temperatures, humidity, temperature, all the, CO2, et cetera. I actually wanted to have an oxygen, oxygen mask in there in the greenhouse, which I mentioned to the fire department, and they told me that you have to have a prescription for that. <laughs> so I just thought an oxygen mask in case anyone, you know, from the CO2, whatever, but uh, so I gave up that idea. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I, I am going to use CO2, but uh, m lower levels than most other people do. I've already done tests, and it's not necessary to overdo it with CO2. But yes, there will be gauges and monitoring of CO2 and anyone going in there will be made aware of that if they feel lightheaded, et cetera, whatever the case may be, to leave and just so they're aware of the situation, you know, the environment that is. So Janet, I'm, what would you want for a condition? So I was just, I mean, maybe I'm misreading the memo, but I thought there'd be like an alarm if the CO2 levels dropped to a certain level, kind of the way there's a You mean when it went you above mean, a certain level? Yeah. I mean above, sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, I could probably look into something like that. You know, I don't think it's, but, honestly, I don't think it's really an issue. Um, uh, it could be, I mean, the plants, remember, the plants give off oxygen, so. And there's a vent system in there. There's a in and out take. Um, so there's going to be change of air. Uh, and like I said, I'm not going to be overdoing it with the CO2. Uh, but I'll look into something uh, along those lines. Um, I, I'm assuming there probably is. There has to be some simple mechanism of the CO2. Um, there has to be. You know, I actually think be. it's, if I, you read the memo uh, on number three on this fire protection transmittal, um, it's actually, it says, so O2 sensors may be required. So it's not about the monitoring of the carbon dioxide, it's about monitoring. Ozone? What well, is ozone? oxygen, the oxygen level that too much, the oh, fear is much. that too much carbon dioxide will m replace the oxygen. So if you're looking into it or what oh, your I other see what best saying. practices oh, are I from your industry, saying. maybe right. they slap a gotcha. Well, one or the other, I guess it does the same monitor. thing, right? Yeah. Right. So you want to know if the oxygen level is too low yeah, or the CO2 level is too high? I don't think they're worried about this too much carbon dioxide. They're, it's worry that there's not enough oxygen. Gotcha. 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 So did you want to include a condition regarding that? And how could that be related? Uh, yeah. Well, and it, so she'll put the condition in, but 
it would be best if you look at your industry and what yeah, yeah, they're yeah, using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just a simple yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years, you know, and I, I've, I've been in sealed environments forever. You haven't been worried about your oxygen. No, I have actually. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> I've been worried about the CO2 levels because I'm aware of with the heat and those lights, and if you're, sometimes you're in there for hours at a time, yep. and I, you know, you feel a little weird sometimes, so I'm always very aware of that, and I was always aware to go outside and get fresh air or make sure there's, if I'm working in there, to have a change up of fresh were, air while I'm in there. You were re-oxygenating, so that would oh, be absolutely. good. Yeah, like, right. so see what is the standard practice, and then right. we can retweak that condition if we need on the next right. time. Well, I know, when, I, I, look, I know, when you know what we, So then we know what we're asking you to install. Right. I know there's going to be this is going to be like open to conditions, this whole project, which I'm not, I have no problem with. I just figured that everything will pan out in permitting, you know, et cetera, and with Ms. Brushtrup, you know, uh, close eye over the project. Um. Sound, sounds so good. Yes, Chris. Perhaps Mr. Gerfine could ask Mike Roy what he would recommend if he has some sort of generic description of this monitor that we could talk about in our condition? He does. Mr. Roy says may be required, so he may not know the actual specifics, but I think it would be worth following up with Mr. Mm -hmm. Roy and asking mm -hmm. him. And yes. then maybe look into the cannabis. Right. Well, what? maybe I'll just throw it in there for good measure. I mean, my plan was, I didn't even think of a measure. I think there are CO2 monitors which tell you levels on the thing, but I don't know if there's an alarm. However, with that being said, what I'll do is, whether required or not, I will, I'm, I'm positive there's some 50 or $100, even $150 sen sensor for O2 with an alarm. It's got to be in today's day and age. So I'll buy one of those regardless. I'll put one in. Um, you can get a canary. <laughs> see if it does. Great. <laughs> um, what well, was the other thing I was going to say? Um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, with, my, with my concern with the oxygen tank, you know, obviously, yeah, so I'll just get one um, and uh, put it in there. Uh, Great. So that will get added to the conditions, and then you'll have a little more info on the, on the next meeting yeah, when yeah, we yeah. finalize. Yes. So this is an organic farm, and so you're not planning on using insecticides, pesticides. You're not doing chemicals to process your product. You're not allowed to in this okay. state. I, I've never have since I'm 16 years old or even younger growing cannabis. I've never used that stuff. <laughs> um, uh, we hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that was in another country. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, no, I, I, I don't. I don't use. I, I started making a pesticide, actually an organic one. I was thinking about. Uh, you know, purveying uh, made out of garlic and hot peppers and boiling water. But no, I don't because, you know, if I was, I'm going to be smoking it, I don't want to smoke pesticides. No, pesticides are illegal uh, in Massachusetts and I'm assuming the rest of the country in, in this industry. But uh, yes, no, absolutely. Uh, no, I'm using earth, some organic uh, fertilizer from the same company, and some worm castings and some other organic stuff. Everything Omari, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not using anything. That, that's how I've always done it. And it's nothing to do with legalities or requirements by the state. This is how, this is my, what they call kashrut or kosher. You know, like my level of uh, sanitary. So that's the way I've always grown. So, you know, I mean, I would do any about this. That's. Yes, go ahead, David. Uh, just, uh, just. So I can get a sense. What are the next steps that, that Mr. Scarfani needs and that we need? We're going to review the order of conditions, the draft order of conditions. We're going to, um, is that agreement? Right now we're going through the development application. Right. I thought we, had, I thought we pretty much had. Um, we're get, I had uh, one more. Um, on the fence, Chris, this is 13. Issues to consider the board may wish to permit the fence to be higher than four feet. I thought it was already going to be like six, six feet. feet, so. As far as I know, we discussed six feet. That's uh, what I was planning. He wants it to be six feet all around. Um, part yep. of it is within the 
front setback, I believe. Right. So you need to allow him to do that. Yes, it's I think a we modification want to. of section six. I think it's section six point two two nine that allows you to make that modification. But it makes sense in this case for security purposes. So that goes on in a condition. You're right. Um, <coughs> So um, on 15, the generator, I, I remember us talking a lot about this, um, but I don't know if you had actually purchased it at that point. I think it looks like that information should be included. If you could It's already that. sitting out there. <laughs> well, even better. So um, if the specs for that could be they were, they were emailed? Or? They were submitted um, sometime. Oh, with so everything. Chris, do we must have that information on the generator? The propane tank also? I did not buy one yet. Okay. Right, I was waiting until I get to that point of size and... I think we want to know the size. Um, right. It's probably going to be two or three hundred gallons, I'm assuming. Say it again. Two or three hundred gallons. Oh, Is, I think that's a standard size. So, Chris, it oh. sounds like he has sent you the information on the generator. He's not ready to buy his propane tank, but he thinks it's two to three hundred gallons. How specific does he have to get? Or do we set a limit on size? Like, what are you looking for there? I think you want to know how big it is, and you want to know how big the generator is. I think the information that Mr. Gerfein gave me did not specify how big the um, generator was. It showed it on a plan. How big or how much it generates for? How big? How big it is? You want to know size. physically how big it is, don't you? I, maybe you don't want. He already All had the, a pad. <coughs> Board when we he were at the site visit, board. so it Excuse must me. be smaller than the pad. Just to clarify, the size is four feet by eight feet. I believe it's about uh, 40, 40, 40 inches tall, maybe. All the spec sheets were given to the town um, of size, dimensions, weights, electrical, water usage, all that stuff. It is a uh, Eight horsepower uh, propane or natural gas engine made by Generac. Uh, it is a 120 208 three phase, 48,000 watt, 167 amp unit. Uh, it will, it will, it's exactly what I need. I checked it with, I spoke with. Uh, uh, Tina, I forget her last name, the electrical, I went over various, you know, what's needed, et cetera. It's carb compliant for Massachusetts. California and Mass have what's called carb compliant with, you know, uh, catalytic converters. So that's carb compliant. Um, and I spoke with my civil engineer and various other people consulted for months on end, and I, it's the right unit for what I need. So does that unit recommend a certain size propane tank? Um, no. I think it's whatever you can afford or have or put in or but I just I'm just gonna go by whatever the town code is. I'm assuming I'm gonna need a between a two and three hundred size tank. A two and three hundred size tank in a huge massive storm with an outage will give me between three and five days, which okay. gives me enough time That's to reload. You know, I don't wanna go too big, it's dangerous, I don't wanna go too small, it's not efficient. So this sounds a little bit like a code thing, so I just wanted to know roughly how big it was going to be. He says and two he to says three. It's going to be two to three hundred Gallon. gallons. And he, the information that we did receive on the generator was not specific as to its size. I do have all of that information, but there wasn't any um, indication as to how big it was. But now we know that it's four feet by eight feet and it's 40 inches tall. So that's good information. And we'll put that into right. our, um, our decision. Thanks. Um, does anyone see any other issues here that need to be defined? Um, I know we covered this before on 17, and then Maria, you're next. Um, it, about the doors, which doors will be operational? Um, which of the main, which is the main door, and how will people get into the existing building, into the greenhouse, and which doors are for emergency only? So, if you want that clarified, Chris, I do believe we know the main door is the one that's down on the driveway. Right. Um, and then, and people will exit and enter for primarily through there. Right. And then you go through, um, you go into the building, and then 
through a throughway right. to enter the greenhouse. And then was it finally determined that you will put uh, an emergency door yes. in the greenhouse? Yes, yes. And then I do believe there's two other doors in the main building, one in the back, one yes. on the front. Yes, those, those I, need, I brought the fire department in. They spoke to me about clarifying with Dave W about what is needed if a push bar or what type of locking mechanism and how many people. So when it comes time, like I said before, that will get hashed out in permitting. I'm right. totally aware of that. I'm, there are certain things I just you know, can't give you a definitive answer until I get to that point and bring the inspector in there and say, what do you want here? And Dave, because the fire was there, they referred me to Dave. So I'm not gonna bother Dave until I get to that point. Because okay. he'll, you know. Is that enough information for you, Chris, or what do you still need? Well, do you want to put in a condition that um, the doors shall be um, determined by the building commissioner and there may need to be some exit pads there? We don't know that. So you sure. don't want to have him having to come back to you to put in an I exit pad? I think that pad, would so. be great. Okay. And just note that there is an emergency door in the um, greenhouse. Yeah, every single door um, in the building has, uh, you know, the exit signs and all the necessary, you know, backup spotlight, battery, back all the, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Because that shows the building commission that you thought about this, you talked about it. It's something that you don't care to look at again. And, you can just right, and he knows. Yeah. Uh, just 20 on the compost, because that has shifted around and ComCom -Com sent us stuff. Just to reconfirm, you're down to one compost pile now? Yeah, it's going to be minimal because I'm going to be reusing my soil. And uh, um, so. Uh, Excess waste and runoff, et cetera, shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't okay. be an issue. And Maria, you have one. Yeah, that was actually my question. Oh, was we just want to make sure it's one pile, and it looks like it's downhill from Hall Drive. So people going to like no, it's men. no, it's no, just the not to interrupt, but no, it's it's flat ground right over there. I mean, but like people driving on Hall Drive or uphill of it, they won't be looking down on them. They can't, they can't see, see that. No, no, there's a whole massive amount of trees there. No, there's, there's, no, sometimes, you know, looking at a map is like, you know, looking at a house when you're going to buy it online, it totally looks like, like it's not even like what you see online. Mm -hmm. But no, that, that's, that's not anywhere near anything that anyone could see at any, even remotely. What did ComCom end up, ConCom end up deciding on the, like, because I see, is it still where it is? I can just see it on the drawing there on the edge. Were they okay with it being against the fence? Yes, they the were. ConCom was they were um, in the end. Yeah. said to push it as far in that direction as possible, so he has okay. done that in accordance with the ConCom requirements. And oh, did removed. you mean the compost? I'm sorry, excuse me. Did you mean the compost pile? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's removed the other one in accordance with the concom -con requirement. They wanted it out of the 100 foot barrier, and they didn't want okay. it. They didn't want one here. They wanted it out of the 100 foot barrier. And they're so good with they that location. Yes. Okay, great. Any other questions that people see? Then we can go through the draft conditions. Um, I won't read everyone because we'll do that when we need to. Um, so one, two. Just to let you know, these were taken from um, two sources. One was the, um, it was material that was written up for the Zoning Board of Appeals that has reviewed many um, marijuana establishments, but they haven't re reviewed a marijuana cultivation establishment. So this okay. is sort of a new thing, but I tried to pull whatever conditions appeared to be relevant from those ZBA special permits. So that's why, that's where these came from. So three, this would still stay the same. It says it, the SPR approval will lapse upon change of ownership. So that was with retail. It's the same with this is, a, I don't know what to call this, a farm, I don't know. So um, I think this ties into the license from the state 
because if Mr. Gerfine, um, you know, sells the business, then the new guy is going to have to come in and get a new um, license from the state. So I believe that he would want to, or you would want him to come back and get a new approval from you. But you can decide that you don't need that, and this could be something that you don't care about. So it's really up to you. Any thoughts? That's like a legal kind of thing. I don't know. We haven't run it because it's a right. It's a business, but not like a retail store. I mean, it, to me, it's if they're changing something on the business. So if what if they kept it exactly the same and it was just a change of ownership and he was properly licensed? So you could say that um, a new owner would have to come and meet with you. Um, and present himself and talk to you about any changes in the operation of the of the property. Um, present a new management plan, for instance. Excuse um, me. I think that I remember reading that there are stipulations in the community host agreement about that that might override everything else. So you might want to look through that. Unfortunately, I do not have it with me. I don't believe I have it. So, Chris, can you make a note? Could you have whatever is the resident expert check on that mm -hmm. so that we know what we are capable of? <coughs> Great. Um, number four, approval shall expire within two years of filing with the town clerk unless substantial construction has begun. Okay. All right, so changes to the operation. Excuse yeah, me. go ahead. I thought that we were going to review this because this was going to be have to be represented to us and that this was these conditions were just dropped. Or do you intend or should we be going through this? Because I do have a couple of language changes, but I think it would be if we're not if we don't need to do that, it'd be more efficient to do that offline and to maybe a language change. You can just submit them straight to Chris. I'm just trying to run through them quick to make sure if there's anything else that we can tell the applicant that he has to go get or do, or if Chris needs to okay. get or do anything so that when we come back in two weeks. I would prefer to hear language yeah. changes now if you oh, wouldn't okay, mind. Then yeah, if they're not extensive, but I think no, I, it would I, be I helpful. Think for number four, um, I, I would propose that language, that language be added. If this approval expires, there will be no presumption of renewal. I think that if that, and I think just that my sense of prior. Sorry, sorry, I keep on forgetting to do this. My sense of prior applications is that if nothing's been done for two years, um, there, I, I don't think that there should, the context in the town's development may be different two years down the road if nothing has been, no work has been done then it shouldn't be presumed that just because the approval was granted two years prior, it will be automatically granted. And that, that should be clear. That's my rationale. Thank you. Um, so just raise your hand if you see something. I'm looking at five and its operation and management plan. I don't see anything that exactly says operation and, and management plan. We have a bunch of different plans here, um, which I believe you said a lot of them are what's required to you to operate under with marijuana. Like the, these different plants, like we have a, I know you don't see what we do. We have like this little, stapled packet with the diversity plan, um, the standard operating procedure, cultivation management plan, the um, pest management, mold and contamination control. Perhaps number five ought to list all those by name rather than any change to operation and management plans, any change to one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, or, or Chris, this handout we have, maybe that needs a title that's just called the whole operation and management plan. I think Mr. Griffin also submitted um, the standard form for a management plan, although I'm not seeing it right now. Maybe Ms. Um, Field Sadler could find it for me. That would touch on, you know, snow plowing, landscaping, and all of those right. things. Those are the normal things. So that was sub 
submitted? I think that's, that, that has been submitted, but Ms. Field Sadler is checking that right now. Have um, we seen it? I don't, you, I don't it, think it was anything extensive. It was just on the simple, maybe a line or two on the form. Right, it's it just first we, packet. we look at, you know, is there a landscaping plan? Um, you know, standard stuff that every building goes through. Snow plowing. Yes, Janet. I, I'm just wondering how detailed we have to have a management plan. Like, do we really care how the buds are cared for and whether there are people are wearing, you know, shoes that, do you know what I mean? Like, that just seems like a level of detail that we're never going to get involved with. The security plan, the landscape management, the, That's like, I think want. we should maybe right. stick to our knitting more and then, yeah, I think the CCC you know. Go over all that stuff. Yeah, the in-house stuff is in our jurisdiction, but this is what I have for operating plans. And what we still need, which Chris is digging for, is where he addressed the snow plowing, landscaping, all the things that are in our jurisdiction, which then I'm just saying maybe all of that should just be lumped together at, with the title of this is the operation ma management plan. So we have like one document that we're like. Yeah, and I think the security plan is of, of just note. Was there a security there is plan? A standard operating procedure product, sale transactions, security procedure to admit persons to an, into facility. Um, so that's like the second to last page. Or yeah, the, the third to last in page in the one. packet. So that, that's I don't know if I, excuse me, I don't know if I had made a snow removal and landscaping sheet. I just, I didn't know I needed, I needed to. He did. He, yeah, is oh, that so in his we application? Have, yes, and you received it in your first packet, which would have been for November 6th. <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. Okay, so if that can be found and, and we can roll and that in with, it these with other this plans, other one, so yes. it's all just in one big thing. Great. Um, yes, and we get more than we even hoped for, but at least then we have the stuff that we have, need. Um, hours of operation, is that on that form also? I assume that was Don't something know. that you... Well, we had discussed oh, that last time I was here, and uh, like some of you probably know, starting a new business, you're there 18 hours a day, and you're at home for six. <laughs> so I don't plan on doing that but you know um, obviously in the beginning I'll probably be there long hours and as time goes you know things are automated I could be there less but you know uh, you're kind of married to a business so you know to say that I'll be there from 9 to 5 is unrealistic if there's no retail operation going on here do we need hours of operation uh, presumably you'll be having um, someone come and pick up the product and take it somewhere else, or maybe you're just gonna do that yourself. Yeah, no, we're gonna be using professional couriers, but that'll all be during midday, noon, high noon during the middle of the day, obviously not at night. There won't be, like you said, yeah, no traffic out of there, two, or two employees aside from myself at most. So. so are we looking for hours for pickup? Like yeah, that kind of thing? Yeah, pickup and delivery yeah, hours between 11 and the, uh, number six is 10 and 8 p.m. to yeah, 8 a.m. Not even that late. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, Chris. So our bylaw, and I'm not seeing it right now, but restricts the hours of operation for any marijuana establishment. You can't go later than 8 o'clock at night, and you can't start earlier than 8 o'clock in the morning. But that's really for anything where somebody's coming in and out. If somebody's there and just staying there and working with the plants, I think that's fine. So this condition says, you know, you could say hours of operation shall generally be blah, 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 but in no event shall the facility be open to the public, nor shall any sale or distribution of marijuana occur upon the premises or via delivery from the premises between the hours of 8 p.m. at night and 8 a.m. in the morning. So we do you want to establish general hours of operation, or do you want to just forget about that and just I, go I with? I think we should start with the uh, start right after the butt in no event. In no event. <laughs> so I think I think one of the issues in terms of time of day w was. Um, Lighting, and so I think the lighting at night was going to go off at a certain time, and then the greenhouse light on the top was going to be covered at a certain time. So I think that might show up in the conditions, and maybe just to 
you, you know, you said that the, there are lights on in the greenhouse, and there's like a co automatic cover that comes over. The so light deprivation like system. Yeah. So, so there will not be any light coming out of the greenhouse at night. Okay, but you know, night starts at like 4:30 in the. So is there, you know, do you want to say after eight or seven or? Do you want there's to a, a photo cell, and it does it according to the time of year because you know obviously the days are change. So um, depending on the time of year, the shading will close uh, at a certain time before dark or right, you know, when it's. I can read your line from the management plan form. It says exterior lights via the auto photo sensor will come on at dusk and go off at 11 p.m. Well, that was my original before yeah. I was. We discussed it here, and I think that what we had discussed was um, dusk. having the lights come on at dusk, and yeah. then when I leave, turn them off, and I think it was something like 9 o'clock, or I forget exactly, something like that. You don't want them on after a certain hour, um, and if I, I needed... I would stick with the 11, then, even if you think you're leaving at 9. Uh-huh, right. Because right. then you're more covered and have more of a cushion. Right. And then the li other lights on the outside of the house go on. Right. And those off. are right. Motion. Those are motion detect. Right. And I can only need really the only one which I really need because the other ones there are two street lights. One's in the back of the greenhouse. It's really just for there for security if I go around there at night or to inspect something. That could be off. It does not need to come on at dusk. There's no need to. It's a waste of electricity and light pollution. The one in the back upper part of the house, um, probably, well, maybe for the ambient light in the property for to see, but I think maybe just at night, only need the one near the front gate needs to come on, actually just to see in the parking lot and the general, the other ones don't, might not even need to come it on. It would stay on. No, they would be off unless I needed them, you know. Do you know how to write this up, Chris? <laughs> So we're talking about two different kinds of lights. One is motion sensor, and those are going to come on whenever come on there's up. motion, right? right? And it, the other is lights that are going to come on, on at, at a certain dusk. time. They're coming on at dusk. And then you said... He, he said go. until he leaves, he was thinking 9. He, in his original application, it says 11. I thought we could just Well, you can say 11. they can't be on after 11. Okay. And then he can turn them off whenever he wants to before 11. Is that okay? Would that, does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that's, I, I guess thinking, that'll work. Yeah, about without the getting into the old, uh, I'll just, you know, we don't have to worry about shutting the other ones off. If I don't need them, I'll just shut them off. Great. Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't. Janet's point of yeah. and I don't see it in the order of conditions, but it's, it's in that uh, management plan, I believe. About, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think that, I think that, I don't see in the order of conditions a point about lighting from the greenhouse shall not be visible after dark or after dusk, right? It's because the, the greenhouse will be lit presumably for a good period of time, 18 hours a day. A lot of those 18 hours are going to be dark. So we don't want that, the greenhouse to be, you know, a lighting impediment. Actually, excuse me, the greenhouse will be lit 12 hours a day by artificial lighting. Because so, it's going to be used for flowering when you, when you grow, it's 18. When it's flowering, it's 12. My point is just, I think, Chris, are you getting it? That, that, that well, he has what he's talked about before. The greenhouse is outfitted with a light deprivation shade system that to eliminate light pollution to the surrounding area. Right. Exactly. Does that exactly does that need to be incorporated into the order of conditions? So we could say the lighting from the greenhouse shall not be visible between dusk and dawn, because he has a mechanism there that will close the shade at dusk. Yeah and open it at dawn, right? Is that okay? Yep. And that's all right. You don't Oh, I'm, I have no intention on polluting the area with light. I mean, I know that's a big no-no and it's not allowed by the CCC. The CCC will be on my case. They'll be checking that and no, I have no intention on having anyone from or Miss Winkler calling and saying I see light from your greenhouse or no. I I have no there, there should not be any issue with the light deprivation system. Um, 
Thanks. So where were we on that? So number seven was possibly the next one that you would consider. And um, I wasn't sure that you wanted to have anything to do with interior building improvements. That's something that the Zoning Board of Appeals yeah. deals with, but I think you could leave that out if it's okay with you. It's okay with me, looks okay. Uh, number eight, all exterior site and architectural improvements, including but not limited to the parking lot, striping, curbing, sidewalks, yikes, lighting, security cameras, fencing, and landscaping shall be constructed and maintained substantially in accordance with the approved site plans and associated details. Um, number nine, building commissioner 10. Okay, so <coughs> landscape plan. Did Mr. Gerfine said he wasn't going to put in any landscaping, and the only landscaping he was going to have was um, lawn, but you hadn't said whether you wanted that to be true and um, whether you were going to give him a waiver from submitting the landscape plan. So if you decided not to waive the landscape plan, you would want to have the plantings done in accordance with the plan and then maintained and replaced. So this number 10 is based on whether you want to give him the waiver from the landscape plan requirement or not. There is no planting, so, right? No. Yeah. no. no. Um, anyone have an issue with waiving the <coughs> landscape plan? I, I wouldn't care if it wasn't a lawn, it was just you know, plants growing, so that right. He's not adding. No, to there's only it's on my property. Farm, there's only so. there's only grass on my property. Any anything that you saw uh, of any in the back that field that's not mine. Um, there are trees in the front here, but those don't. Not, those not even need pruning. It's not like things that need pruning. They're just. You would cut your lawn, but other than that. No, that's all. That's all there is. Anything. I've been there. I've had it for a year. That's all there is. There's nothing to do but thank God. There's nothing to do but cutting lawn. <laughs> We good with that? I okay. Um, let me see it. About eleven at twelve. 12 good. 10 at 11. Excellent. License. I'm down to fifteen. And Chris, please state if you have something that you. Legal stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do. Go good. A uh, number fourteen. Yep. Um, I would uh, add some language to the effect that the. Applicant shall notify the, I don't know who, the planning department, Chris, uh, of any, and I'm not quite sure what, of any administrative action taken by the CCC for the this business or the applicant. I, I just want that, um, just that, 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 that the applicant has an obligation to inform us if there's anything that goes on that we might not otherwise be aware of. Thank you, David. I'm down around 20 facilities. Okay, there's 21 is um, the ventilation. And Janet, like you brought up earlier, it says no pesticides, insecticides, chemicals. And B is no odor from marijuana or its processing can be detected by a person with an unimpaired or normal wise. Uh, otherwise normal sense of smell at the exterior of the facility or at any adjoining use or property. Mm -hmm. uh, so to... so do we have this on number 22? It says including a minimum of two operators or managers of the facilities identified as the designated contact persons. I know we have Mr. Grafine, but is there a second person, or do we, like, Not yet. I don't know, is that, like, a required thing, or is that the retail stores? I think that's really, you know, if you can't get in touch with Mr. Grafine, who do you call if something right. happens? So maybe you want Mr. Grafine to designate some other individual who could be contacted if there's a You got to call a friend? <laughs> That's, I think, what we'll need to know. Well, the, for fire, the fire department will have access to the keys and all that. So. 
it's just whether or not it's required. So she'll check if it's not required. Right. Then. Well, I mean, in the future, when I hire someone, I could obviously. So. Um, shall file number twenty-four file an annual report with the planning board. Yeah, that's, that's part of the host agreement. I think that's required. Do we really by the, get involved with that? Wow. I think it's required under the section of the zoning bylaw. Um, and let me find well, that's already in the host agreement. Is that part of yes, the Yes, it is. Okay. Do we get any annual reports from anybody else? No. Oh, wow. Okay. That's new. That's um, yeah. Uh, Maria. Is that any difference between number 16 and number 24? 16. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Good eyes. Except one's italicized. No, one's site plan review, one's uh, annual report. Okay. So is there anything that we're forgetting to oh, um, instruct shall, this uh, applicant to, or Chris Bestrup to go look into? So we'll get something from the town engineer. I'll try to get something from him. And... Yeah. Ooh, three and 26 say the same thing. <laughs> Slightly differently, I think, but it's about transferring of the um, special permit. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone's patience with this part, because <laughs> I think it will put us in better shape for the next meeting. Um, are there any other questions I see nothing so um, at this point we would continue this hearing until our, the 18th is that what we're gonna do um, and hopefully we'll have all our P's and Q's everything lined up okay may I just say something yeah I appreciate um, Mr. Gerfine's cooperation. I think this has been a lengthy process for him, and he hasn't gone through this kind of process before, and he's cooperating really well and producing all the documents that we need. It's just taking a little bit longer than we expected. Yeah, thank you for your patience. It's new for us, too. You're kind of like our guinea pig here with us. Yeah, my patients are gone a long time ago, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you need to find something, way to relax a little bit. So I think next time what the planning board is going to do, just to explain this to Mr. Gerfine, mm. they're just going to finalize the conditions and then they have to make findings based on the zoning bylaw. And we should have drafts of those available to the planning board before the meeting and we'll send them to you. And um, I think that will What time are we going to put it? What do we have already on the 18th? We have David Zomek coming with Mandy Johanneke to talk about the master plan. And then, and then Amherst Hills, and, too. And, Amherst, and Hills. Amherst Hills. Did we set a time for them? Do we remember? I don't remember. Do, I think we did. Uh, but I think, was it? We might put this first. That's what I'm hoping, yeah. if we could put this in first, yeah. either a 705 or a 703. Well, so we're going to have to go through conditions and that. That may take some time. Maybe we should put it off till January. Can, is, is putting it off till the January meeting a problem for anybody? Put this you, off? Mr. Do you? I, I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of this. Yeah, I think he wants I'm, to. I've had it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Easy to uh, it's all right. I've been doing this way. Okay, 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 okay. I think we can fit it in on the 18th, and we're not even sure Amherst um, Hills will come back because we haven't had a status on where that is right now. Um, we're sort of in a limbo with them um, and with the town and finding out if now there's a foot and a half of snow out there, so I don't know if they're putting storm drains in. Um, so we'll, can we say 705 or 704? 704, two weeks from now. Thank you for your patience. Okay, Let's finalize you. everything, check all the boxes, and I know that's important to you to start off on the everything perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you want to make a motion? 
Oh, yeah, to continue the hearing. Move yeah. to continue the public hearing until uh, 704 on uh, the 18th. De December 18th. Second. Great. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? And it's unanimous. Thank you. We will see you then. Okay. So we will move on to the third um, public hearing, 720. This public hearing is, uh, this is a continued hearing for Bank of America. This public hearing is continued from July 24th, 2019, September 18th, 2019, November 6th, 2019, November 20th, 2019. SPR 2019-8, Javier Campos of Adams and Ruxton for Bank of America, 360 College Street. Request site plan review approval to install new light posts and fixtures to provide better illumination, safety, and security for the Bank of America ATM. Com zoning district map 15A, parcel 28, announcement the applicant has requested to withdraw this application without prejudice is, well, I can say, is there a motion to uh, to approve the applicant's request to withdraw the application without prejudice and close the public hearing? I see Michael saying. Um, I have a motion, but it is not that motion exactly. May, uh, I, may I continue and then see if we have a second? Uh, can Chris make sure. a statement first? I just wanted to fill in a little information. Okay. Um, what the applicant has asked for is to withdraw the application on the two light poles, but to be allowed to um, install the lights that are proposed for the building. There are 16 um, replacement lights. In other words, there's already fixtures for 16 lights underneath the eaves, and then there are four other light fixtures that are proposed to be um, attached to the building. And they can go ahead with that um, installation without the planning board review. They can do that under an administrative approval by the um, building commissioner. So I just wanted to put that out there that what they're requesting is withdraw, withdrawal from the um, light poles, but they're going to proceed with the lights on the building, and they can do that without going through site plan review. And they'll remove the concrete structures. I would still like to. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. I just wanted to, uh, she had mentioned that earlier today and then didn't say it. So, right, with the tag on that, uh, okay. Yes, Michael. Okay, this, this, is fairly, this is fairly complicated, so I'll pass it out. Ooh. Um, I move to close the public hearing and further move that one, the planning board deny Bank of America's re request to withdraw SPR 2019-08 without prejudice. Withdraw without prejudice, their request without prejudice. Two, the planning board deny site plan approval for SPR 2019-08 on the grounds enumerated in 112501 of the zoning bylaw that A, Insufficient information was submitted with the application in order for the board to adequately review the proposal. And B, the site plan, quote, does not meet the requirements of section 11.2, uh, close quote. Specifically, 11.2, oh, sorry, 11.210, which states, quote, in all, in all instances where site plan review is required, no work shall commence to alter a site until site plan review has been granted by the planning board, close quote. And three, that the Bank of America be, shall be required, subject to the provision of section 11.4 enforcement, to remove the two light pole bases which were constructed on the subject property without authorization prior to the commencement of site plan review. And if there's a, if there's a second, I'd like to speak to that a little bit. Would you like to speak on it? Yes, thank you. Um, the uh, Planning Board Rules and Regulations, uh, Section 4, says that a plan may be, may be withdrawn without prejudice prior to the publication of the notice of the public hearing, a date which must, in this case, have been sometime in July. 
requests to withdraw after publication date of the notice may be granted only by the permission of a majority of the board. Now, clearly that window uh, has been closed, so this requires our permission to withdraw without prejudice. And I submit that uh, we should not allow a withdrawal without prejudice for several reasons. First of all, way too much staff time has been spent on this ill-conceived and very poorly presented plan, to say nothing of the time this board has spent discussing it. Uh, and in regard to the uh, to 2A, insufficient information, um, at least twice after receiving detailed requests from this board, the applicant has failed to return with satisfactory answers or revisions, and has simply not appeared on many occasions. I see no reason why more time should be allowed, and, and then therefore I think the, uh, the um, uh, plan should not be given a withdrawal without prejudice. Um, finally, uh, the, uh, the fact that the site plan review, the site plan uh, does not meet the requirements of section 11.2 um, is simply evidence of the applicant's unwillingness or inability to act in conformance with the zoning bylaw. And the same applies to the requirement that we should uh, require them to remove the, the uh, um, concrete posts, bases that had been installed prior to the uh, uh, submission of the site plan, much less the approval of the site plan. Uh, so, Chris, if we were to uh, vote on this motion and it passes, what does that change? Or, like, do they, we don't return the fees, or just what are the consequences? Well, we wouldn't return the fees. There's no, um, no need to do that. Um, I'm just wondering what it does to the other lights that they want to put on the building. Um, so without prejudice just means that if they come back with something similar, um, that they won't be denied. If you deny an application outright, they can't come back for two years. So I guess you'll have to think about whether you think it will be beneficial to the town or the facilities on this property to have improved lighting that would be mounted on the building because um, if you deny the whole thing, then they, I think they wouldn't be able to do anything, but I'm not a, actually absolutely sure about that. So well, I'd, have to, suggesting, building, sorry. I'd no, have to ask the building commission. If you were suggesting that their current I hope is to simply uh, change out the fixtures that exist already underneath the uh, overhang, is that is that what they want to do, as you understand it? They want to do that, and they also want to add four lights, which are shown on the plan that you received, and the lights are also on the building. And um, you did receive a plan of this site in your packet, didn't you? No, we not did not. Recent. I think I have a I have a copy on the desk. I'll go get it in the desk. So, Chris, I'm sorry, Christine? Uh, yeah. So, you're saying that they could put these lights on without a permit or talking to Rob Moore, the building commissioner? Like, why? I don't know what your denial would do to their ability to go to Rob Moore and get an administrative approval. It might nullify that. Um, so, they still need to get, they need, still need to get approval by the building commissioner for their new plan. If they are allowed to withdraw without prejudice, then they would go to the building commissioner and ask his permission for administrative approval to install the lights on the building. And then they would come back and take out those bases and have no more to do with putting in pole lights. So that's, that's what they would like to do at this point. Um, but if you deny the application, which includes the lights on the building, 
I am concerned that it would deny their ability to put the lights on the building and prevent the building commissioner from administratively allowing them to do that. I'm not sure about that. I'm not a lawyer. You could ask the building commissioner, but he's not here right now. So <laughs> I can't ask him until Tuesday. Um, but anyway, so that, that would be my concern if you denied the application, that they may not be able to install these lights on the building. So we will pass around this, um, this plan. Excuse me, I'll go get it on my desk. Yes, this is it. So Does the plan say how tall those four um, lights are going to be? It tells what the catalog. Uh, I think they're like wall packs. Um, they're you know some. They're not on a pole. They're just right on the building. We may have an image of what those are like in our folder here. I'm going to look through it. Are the wall packs going on the underneath the overhang, or are the are the wall packs going underneath the overhang, or affixed to the face of the of the overhang? Yeah. They won't illuminate the parking spaces unless they're aimed the wall straight out. The wall pass. I'm going to pass down um, images of these, and Miss um, Chow may be more familiar with this type of light. One is called SH, yeah, so and the other one is SK, yeah, and they both appear to be um, wall pass. Street to get anything light hit to here. Yeah, and that's that why. Line. So if I draw this line, um, this is all. They'll shine. And they'll shine. And there is some over. It's low. It's. It's all way under one. I, I wouldn't say that. The line for one is like right around. They they did hit it pretty close. It's it's right there on the sidewalk. They're all under. Um, it's all under one little candle. Yeah, because it says it can be. So this is like nine. Like a, like this is six. This is nine. This is eight. This is four. This is two. This is one point four. Here's point nine. So that's why I drew the line at like one. 
Okay, what is you that want mean? it under. That's like the, it's the, um, it's a candle, um, mm -hmm. candle. Those are No, it's close. No, it's, um, they have a lumen, candle lumens. I can't remember what the word is right now, but you want it like under one. You want it over one to light things, mm -hmm. and you want it under one when it comes off the property. <laughs> so okay. I drew a line basically where one is. Yeah, but my so, point is, like, we talked about those lights at, at the field, and how high they are and how focused they are straight down. These can't be that high. They're going to be 12 feet off the ground. They so are. So they can't be. But this is showing you where the light bleeds out, is basically. So what I'm showing you is... According to the computer model, this is where the light bleeds out. But you so know that you've then they did this one. This is all the little ones underneath. Mm -hmm. um, so they did the same thing. These look even brighter than than maybe this is. So that's what they want, and this is what they got. Overall plan, ATM. So this is what they want compliance wise, and this is what their computer model says that they'll get from putting these on. And it's at 1.1 1 .1, um, candle lumen or whatever at this point. And it, it goes under, it's really low. It's like bleeding out then. So according to this plan, yeah. so the ironic thing is why didn't they do this like, in well, the beginning of the get-go? It's still not really very helpful for me because I, I, do, I understand what you're saying about that. the light fades when it gets to this point. but. Um, the glare in your face doesn't fade because they're aimed. I mean, they're they're, they're aimed down. They're aimed. Do you have a picture of them, Chris? Well, if, yeah, I think. If yeah. they're aimed down, they're not going to they're not going to carry that far unless they're really bright. This part would be mounted against the building, yeah. and this thing would stick out, and the light would come out of the bottom of this and shine down. It's like a mini cobra, is what's happened. Okay. So this is like what attaches on the pole. So here you can, so Chris, I'm gonna have you go back. I'm gonna ask you about, again, to remind everyone why this even came about. Like this is probably what they should have done in the beginning, but yeah. they just came and put these mm -hmm. in and, and that triggered, so we had to get involved in, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we were looking at the, uh, we hadn't in our packets received the actual photovoltaic kind of uh, modeling of, uh, with what they're planning, which again, I don't have, what, it, what is it 12 underlights? I forget the exact number. 16, 16 underlights 16 and underlights. four wall packs. And four wall packs that actually don't look like a traditional wall pack. They look like a mini Cobra um, that will attach um, onto the building and shine down with, of course, some spray, and that's what they modeled. So, Chris, if you could refresh. So, you know, looking at this, it meets their, the, the um, numbers on the, the map on the bottom is their ATM compliance numbers that they're trying to hit, and then it looks like the modeling was done on the, on the map above it. Um, and there doesn't appear to be much light bleed on uh, off their property. So can you refresh it, in my memory why this came about this way and why it even went to us and why didn't this just happen the first time around? So um, unfortunately, when Bank of America and their contractor came to Town Hall to get permits for these lights, they were granted an electrical permit. That's all they applied for. They didn't know that they had to apply for a site plan review approval um, for the pole lights. Okay. So they, they came, they got their electrical permit, they started putting in the pole lights, put those enormous bases in, and then they were stopped by the building commissioner. And he okay. said, no, you can't do any more. You haven't received permission to do this. 
So then they came and presented the site plan review application, which included the two pole lights and all of these other lights, which we just talked about, the wall, wall packs or cobra lights, if you want to call yeah, them that, cobras. and the under, um, under the eave lights. Um, so they presented that to you. You didn't like the pole lights. You talked to them about relocating them. For whatever reason, they weren't able to do that, didn't want to do it. Um, so then they came up with the idea of just not doing anything. But then within the last 24 hours, someone has come back to us and said, no, we really want to do the lights that are on the building, but we'll forget about the pole lights. So that's the, that's the state where we're in right now. And they've asked to be able to withdraw without prejudice their site plan review application, and then they can proceed to ask the building commissioner for administrative approval of the lights on the building. That's the current status. Can I ask one question yes. on what you said? So back to when they pulled an electrical permit, um, don't you have to submit a plan of what you're going to do, and weren't these light poles on it, and did that just get missed? It got missed. Yes, I don't know what state that was in. Whether it went to one of the, whether whether it went to one of the inspectors and the inspector said fine. I don't understand that whole that that whole uh, stage of things or phase of things is a murky problem to me. Um, but now we're faced with this problem, and what do we do about it? Thank you. Yes, Michael. Uh, Chris, am I correct in understanding what you, what you just said? that these suggestions for the, uh, the, the lights that we're talking about now came in just yesterday? Because we, uh, we, you had sent us a notice that they were asking to be withdrawn uh, earlier, a, a week ago or so. So they have always included the lights on the, under the eaves and the lights on the fascia um, in their plan. And they have also included the, the pole lights. So what came in yesterday or the day before was, like last week they said they wanted to withdraw the whole application. And then within the last 24 hours they said, oh, we really don't want to withdraw the whole application. We just want to not put the pole lights in and see if we can put the lights on the building that are mounted on the building. What do we have to do to get that approved? And so I looked in the zoning bylaw and found the section about administrative approval. And I asked the building commissioner if those lights that are mounted on the building could be administratively approved. And he said yes. So that's, um, that's how it came about. But those lights on the building have always been part of this proposal, along with the pole lights. But the request to put those lights in, but not put the pole lights in. That just came to you yesterday. That's correct. I think it was yesterday. Thank you. Ms. Um, Ms. Field Sadler may have a specific time when it came in. Maybe it was Monday. Maybe it wasn't yesterday. But it came in within the last 48 hours. 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh. So, so, Chris, may I just, I don't understand. When the, if the building commissioner authorized, if the building commissioner, commissioner considers this, does the building commissioner, this request for the wall packs to be mounted, would the um, questions about dark sky compliance and light pollution, would those factor into the, the building inspector, building commissioner's decision making? Those would be factored in, uh, particularly if you asked him to factor them in. Um, in fact, he asked me yesterday if the planning board had any specific um, concerns about what's being proposed, and then he would um, incorporate those concerns into his approval. 
So, so I'm going to try to follow up to the su to the substance of Michael's motion and the proposal for the um, as as I understand it now that Bank of America is making for lighting changes to the site. Oh, well, I'm sympathetic to the proposed motion. I would hesitate to. I would. I, I would be concerned in um, supporting it. I think it's unduly punitive. Um, yes, um, there have been frustrations, and uh, uh, however, they're withdrawing. There, for me, the, the public safety of those um, ugly, prematurely installed bases will be removed and and I would so I would I endorse the I would support number three in this proposed motion but the other two points about them withdrawing their they, they've they've by going through doing the work that they've done and then withdrawing the application that's wasted effort on their part and if they're able to satisfy their needs with increased lighting although I am concerned about lighting pollution and dark sky compliance um, then, and it doesn't need to be considered by this body, then that's, it seem, that seems fine to me. Um, again, my, the main concern and the peak that I felt about their installing those pedestals, those bases, prior to understanding what they needed to do, um, that, that's been met by their removing those pedestals and restoring the, the, the kind of the status, the, Current state of the park, that parking lot. That that's that's again. I'm sympathetic to 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 the motion. I just don't. I think it's it's. I I, I think I I would not want to provoke a backlash from uh, the proponents because they now can't move ahead with what doesn't what seems to me to be moderate. Um, uh, improvements. Um, Jack. Uh, I just was wondering about the normal process there in terms of granting the electrical permit where they understood they were good to go. Was there fault on you know, the town's part in terms of a perhaps casual conversation where they got that green light. I mean, I, that's where I'm kind of concerned about, again, punitive sort of uh, uh, you know, motions against uh, Bank of America. Chris. As I said, I don't fully understand exactly what the transaction was, but I'd say that the fault was on the town's part for granting the electrical permit without um, thinking about whether the light poles needed to go through site plan review. and. It could have been a mistake that was done by one of the administrative people at the front desk. It could have been a mistake that was made by one of the inspectors. I really don't know, because I wasn't part of that discussion. But it was not, in my view, it was not Bank of America's fault, because they did come to town hall. They did ask what they needed to do to put this lighting scheme in, and they were told they needed an electrical permit. And so they took the electrical permit, and they went and started the work. And that's when we noticed, oh, it's that needs site plan review. Um, could I have that photovoltaic map back again? To, and I, I just, um, so I, I guess either way, whatever we decide right now, this is leaving our world and our jurisdiction and it's going to the building commissioner. Um, but I think he would listen to us on any suggestions we had. Um, Looking at it, um, looking at the old plans from months ago, it does look like they're doing the same proposal that they had made then with the 16 lights and the four on the outside of the building, which is weird because I don't even know why they needed those poles then when they seem to have proper light coverage and it meets their ATM compliance right now. But what I still do have a little concern about is, I don't know when it's opening or what's happening, but there is this um, some kind of Asian food restaurant that seems to be opening on the left end. And I understand that 
the owner of this building seems to be completely like out of the picture on this. And we're trying to solve a little bit more of, of the uh, Bank of America's problem and more of the building's problem. But I would love to see a fifth light placed on the west side, the west, um, southwest corner, um, that would put a little bit of light uh, on that dark area. And of course, they would do it so that they don't, um, so there's not bleed onto the other property. Um, and my other suggestion is that same light on that they have proposed on the uh, southeast side of the building. There's two of them right next to each other. I would prefer seeing one of them slid back a little north, um, which would give a little bit more light coverage on that other dark back corner um, where we know that being dark back there, um, there's too much privacy back there. Uh, does anyone have any feelings about that? Maybe sending a motion also, or I don't know, a memo or whatever we do to the building commissioner uh, for him to consider. Um, does anyone else feel that maybe a couple more lights would be good? Jack? Seems reasonable. I mean, it would be in the building commissioner's you know, um, decision, but to me it just... If they're putting four, we're asking to slide one a little bit and add a fifth. Janet? So this seems to be a solution from the beginning in search of a problem. And so, and it seems like we've taken a huge amount of our time on this very chaotic, slipshod time waster. And so I'm very sympathetic to your emotion. And I'm, part of me just wants to see this, <laughs> never see this again, you know, and just, you know, if, if he just replaced the lights underneath, it seems like that would be adequate. If they added some other ones, that seems fine. I just, I kind of just, I'm not sure that's like a vote in one direction or the other, but I'd be just happy never to see this and presented this, this situation, which I've never really understood what they're trying to solve, because it seems everything's been fine just to see it go away. And maybe a message sent to Bank of America of just, you know, you, there's a lot of time spent on this by, your, by you, by us. And, you know, it's just, it would seem very chaotic. I'm, I'm new to the board, but this seemed really poorly handled. I, I agree with that. I, what makes me uncomfortable with the motion is how much of this was that town hall, you know, error. Like, whatever triggered the beginning of this to, to spin it into our court. Yes, David. I, I, I'm sorry. I think the, it's the incumbent on the applicant to sort of be prepared. Um, so, but that's not the reason why I would hesitate. Uh, again, I think that um, requiring that the applicant remove the hazardous light bases, light poles, uh, light pole bases. Um, I'm concerned about increasing the illumination in an area that seems already well illuminated, but that's kind of, uh, that. now that's in the building commissioner, that would be in the building commissioner's um, uh, purview. Uh, I don't think that, I think our message is loud and clear in the, in the process that we weren't happy with them and that they're getting that and that we don't, to do more is to, again, do more, and that doesn't seem to be necessary. Um, if, the, if they uh, are able to accomplish their goals without, with just the building commissioner's uh, approval, I think that the building commissioner should be aware that there are some concerns about illumination, whether it's too much or too little, we have not really decided, but, and I would leave it at that, and it's done. Um, so we have two, uh, a motion and a second, and we're in discussion. Do we want to vote on this motion, or do we want to make a new motion? I don't know my Robert's rules at all. Well, part but of it is, does Michael, do you want Michael, to would you be this? open to a friendly revision to your, or maybe it's not friendly, because I would, but you, I would, I would, I would propose um, removing points number one and two and retaining number three. 
would be my proposed revision to your motion. Are you open to that? Uh, that would not be a friendly amendment, so I would not be open. So you'd need five uh, members to vote affirmatively for the motion, I believe. Is that right? In the I, motion to deny, I believe. I you'd don't need know. Five. Uh, I believe the, the the bylaw says a majority. Simple majority. Uh, it's not the bylaw. It's the uh, uh, planning board rules and regs. Rules and regs. And I don't have them in front of me, but I, I just quoted that one section. But I do remember that that was, it was if a majority. Uh, we need four to vote affirmatively for the motion. I'm sorry? We need four affirmatives, a simple majority. So we can, uh, your ch we can vote on the motion as it is. Um, or we can make a modification to it, or we could come up with a whole new motion. We can play it out on any of those, however you want. Well, if it's not up to me, it's up to, it's up well, to you, you're the chair. I have, I have, made I, the motion? I do not, I cannot anticipate uh, any amendments to the motion that I would accept as friendly. I worked that's for some time on that motion, and um, it's possible that there might be an, a, an amendment that I could accept, but I, I, I doubt it. Um, in, in light of that, it's up to you to decide what to do next. Um, so, excuse me, yeah. I'm not seeing in the rules and regulations where it says that only a majority is needed for um, a denial. I have it. Is there some sure paragraph that, that you could it's an old one, refer but, to? Yeah, I have. My, it's an old one, but it was just I slightly. Thought, I thought it was five, and that's what we were filing into between the sites. And I don't this is for withdrawing. It's, uh, this is a motion to withdraw. It's not about approving it. Right, so I don't know if, I don't recall, I think, don't know. It, it's in the planning board rules Easy. and regulations. Oh, it's yeah, not in the yeah, yeah. zoning bylaw. It's the last. It's uh, near, near the last, yep, near the end of it. we're looking here, so. Um, I'm looking for voting. Hearing. Okay. <laughs> Decisions and fine. Oh, is that voting? No, 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 it's, it's, it's about withdrawal. Ah. I don't see anything in here that says something different from what we are used to with site plan review, which is that you need five to pass a motion with regard to site plan review. It says right here, request to withdraw after publication date of the notice may be granted only by permission of a majority of the board. And that's page 15. Should, should we vote on Michael's motion? And if that fails, we'll have another one? We can do it that way. All right, so uh, we had a first and a second in discussion. Um, so with the motion, present current motion that we have before us, um, which I've lost, all in favor, um, against, abstain. Okay, so I think it was three, four, five. one, five, zero. Yes, Michael. David. So I mean, I'd, like David. To, I'd like to propose. I'd like Thank to pro you. I'm like, still like I lost okay. my motion. It's okay. I'm like I've lost. You've paper. lost your vote. You've lost all I've bearings lost my mind. on this world. I've seriously lost it. I, I would. Um, <laughs> I would propose a second yes. motion. Yes, that's what I'm going to do next. Great. Propose a second motion. Uh, that we allow the request to withdraw without prejudice. That we condition that 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 that's conditioned on the. Uh, number three, that it's uh, required to remove the two light pole bases and that, that the condition of the parking lot is restored. 
um, and that uh, I would add, I don't know whether we add this to the motion or whether we add this as a recommendation to the building commissioner to uh, review with all due diligence and skepticism about the implications of the proposed lighting um, and to uh, make those conform with dark sky compliance and and safety requirements as building commissioner sees fit. Some of that. That too. That too. Do I hear a second on that motion? Second. Is there a discussion on this motion? I, I'm Jack? just I'm just not clear what this without prejudice means. I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't. Uh, they made a mistake. They want to remove it, and they should get rid of the light pole bases. All that makes sense to me, but what does without prejudice mean again, please? So you can request to withdraw, or you can request to withdraw without prejudice. And without prejudice means that you can come back in the future with a similar um, proposal. And what happened during this public hearing does not bear on that new um, application. We usually recommend that people withdraw without prejudice or request that withdrawal, but you can just approve a withdrawal if that suits you more. Um, it's probably not going to make any difference in the long run, um, but it's just, it sort of gives the applicant a little more flexibility if they withdraw without prejudice and you approve it that way. Uh, Chris, this is a question I had when I was thinking about this memo and I don't know the answer to it and uh, uh, maybe you do, I'm sure you do. Um, if um, an applicant withdraws without prejudice and that withdrawal is granted by the board, um, can they come back with a similar plan with no additional fees, do they have, or do they have to pay fees all over again, start all over again with a new SPR? They would have to pay the fees all over again. Then what's the effect of the with, without prejudice? If, if they withdraw or deny, then they, I believe they can't come back for two years. If they withdraw with not having no prejudice, <laughs> if they withdraw with prejudice, they can come back for two years, and if they get denied, they can't come back for two years. But the difference between withdrawing with prejudice and withdrawing, there's no difference functionally then. I think there is a difference in the sense that if you do not include without prejudice, then um, they would not be able to come back for two years with a similar plan. It would be, in effect, a denial. For two years. In effect, it's a denial for two years. Yeah. Well, a denial is a denial for two years. I mean, it's just. But I think what I'm concerned about is that I think you don't want to deny them the ability to put in those lights underneath the eaves and on the fascia. That's my understanding, um, even though you do want to deny the light poles. And so if you allow them to withdraw without prejudice, the result of that is going to be. They'll be able to get approval for the lights on the building. The light poles won't be allowed. They'll have to take out the um, light pole bases. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, um, no, just keep going as long as you David, would you accept the friendly amendment to, sure. to your motion that the light poles must be removed within 30 days? How about removed and restored? Even better. Weather permitting, I mean, I got, there's got to be that kind of, I, I think. But, yeah. I'm, that's great. Why don't you say by June 1st or May oh, 1st right. or, you know, some, um, some by date. What? Some May date 1st? Because this weather is not going to allow them to come out there. They well, this, this, this weather is not allowing the snow plow to work. I drove by there this morning and that whole half of the parking lot was unplowed. Ah, uh, that's at some point. Landlord. Yeah, that's the landlord, uh, the owner. Yeah, because um, we want them to cut. They could cut in the winter, but I like the restore. I would like them to at least, you know, coal patch or fix the pavement. And that 
is tough to do before maybe you can in April. Yeah, so Jen. you would split that into two parts, remove the, the concrete structures <sighs> within 30 days and then repair the pavement by June 1st. Good. I That's like that. more of a pain for them, so. <laughs> So if the, sorry, the proposed amendment is now something like this, right? There, um, withdraw the application without prejudice, point one. Point two, removal of light post pole bases uh, done with, in a timely fashion, not to exceed 30 days for the removal, if possible, and not to, and, and June 1 for the restoration of May, the parking. May 1st. May 1st. Yeah. May 1st for the restoration um, uh, uh, prior to prior to any permission, you know, or no, to, and then point three, point three is building commissioner, please be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I was said before, something like that. Is that fair? Is that fair, Mike? Do we have a second? I'm not sure what the third is. Like is it really be be careful or no no <laughs> it's building commissioner you know please you know take <laughs> under advisement concerns raised about suitability of the lighting and dark sky compliance which we can follow up with a separate memo now okay if that's uh, if we get okay okay so maybe, maybe that's not a part of the motion maybe yeah. that's yeah yeah we can drop that and then we can give him okay. our um two cents Great. Uh, so is there a second I'll to second. that? Okay. Um, any more discussion on that? Chris, do you have that? I do have it sort of scribbled here. I think between Kevin and I can okay. have it on the right? Great. All right. So all in favor? I see unanimous. Uh, Jack. So um, if we could just send a, a little memo to... The building commissioner, I would just love to suggest, and please give me feedback if you don't agree, I, I would just like to have a, um, a fifth light added, the mini cobra thing, and, and the one um, to the far east moved further north with no this light one bleed. Facing this way? Facing yeah, this, street this street. way. Okay. So this gets lit up here, and then this gets lit up a little. And they'll run it so that, and he'll check that, that this, so there's no um, light bleed. Okay. Janet's not feeling well, so she's Oh, good. yeah, you have. Thank you for coming. Hope you feel better. Um, does, so could we send, and was there anything else we wanted to tell him besides? Thanks. Uh, and of course, dark sky compliant, you know, our usual, which it seems like the same light fixtures from the very beginning that they're proposing and they were fine. Mm -hmm. Ah, but of course, lumens, let's, let's go for the under, at least under 4,500. Yeah, I can't remember, but I just want to make sure that the building commissioner, Kelvin. the Kelvin's under, <laughs> let's go under 4,000. Yeah. Thanks. That would actually match better across the street. Those street lights in the Florence Savings Bank, they're very yellow, so I know they're um, under four. Okay. Yikes. All right, so um, Maria, zoning oh. subcommittee report. Yes. See, so we talked about mixed-use buildings, and Mr. Croner joined us and lent us his expertise. And so we combined that with two other sort of research projects we had ongoing. Oh, sorry, no, two other uh, articles we had ongoing, the supplemental dwelling apartment increase and the planning board voting requirements. So those three pieces we'll try to hone down and present to the planning board for review and um, one day when we better understand the process with the CRC and zoning subcommittee and planning board, we might push those forward as a first sort of stab at how this whole new process might work. Um, I think that's all we discussed. Does that sound right? 
There's no public comment. Anyone else have anything to add? Okay, nope. Uh, other, nope. Uh, item five, old business. Topics not reasonably anticipated in 48 hours prior to the meeting. Chris. Item six, new business. Item A, master plan update, memorandum to community resource uh, committee, CRC from Mandy Jo Haneke regarding recommendation on process for updating and adopting the master plan per chapter section 9.8. Uh, it says a brief discussion and preparation for upcoming meeting. Um, <laughs> yeah. So at 8.30 this morning, I was here and went to a CRC meeting and was talk, It was asked to go about parking, um, which I'll save you from that. But since they had me there, they, uh, CRC wanted to ask me about the upcoming meeting coming here uh, on the 18th in a couple of weeks. Uh, the way it was sort of sitting right now, Mandy Jo Haneke, who is the chair of the CRC, was expecting to come and talk with us, but she gave us the option of having a joint um, meeting for part of maybe the second half of our meeting that would be at least four members of the CRC would come um, and talk. It also got expanded a little bit. It, it, it's mostly this meeting on the 18th is about how to proceed with the master plan update and, and sort of um, delineating out expectations and, and then from there uh, working on a scope of work that would meet those expectations of both the CRC, the town council, and for us because the master plan is ours, but they also would like to start looking into sort of defining the same thing, but for the bylaw changes, um, which is a little bit more loosey goosey on how that's how comprehensive that is going to be. But uh, our hope is that um, Ms. Bestrup and Mr. Morrow will be coming forward with at least some basic um, of their own expectations lists of what they see or would both uh, desire to have updated in the master plan. And it was also suggested to create a list of documents, one way that we can sort of um, uh, figure out the scope of updating or revising the master plan is what has the town taken on and accepted uh, as initiatives, goals, and plans since the master plan was finalized. Uh, I think we have Mandy Jo Henneke's somewhere in here, the memo that she sent out. If you look at the last paragraph on the first page, it's sort of, um, she's very general there, which is fine because she's just trying to get the ball rolling, but you can see where it says plans, goals. So it would be things like the transportation plan was passed in 2015. Okay, well, what did that add in? We have like a complete streets um, policy. What does that add in? Um, and of course, like the town council just a few weeks ago took on a, a big uh, green sustainability initiative with some goals. So having a list of actual documents to sort of refer to, to help guide what has to be updated and changed. And I think, Chris, you're going to be working on that. So are there any comments from the board? Do you want just Ms. Haneke? Do you want a few CRC people? Uh, is there anything that you can see um, that would be helpful for us that's either provided by um, Chris Bestrup or her department or Rob Morrow or anybody else in town? Yes, Michael. Uh, I, th I think maybe a meeting with the whole CRC would be premature. Um, I, I don't think we'd have a clear enough sense uh, as to what uh, they want us to do. Uh, and having reread the master plan twice in the last two weeks, uh, I have a lot of questions about that. Um, so I, um, wow. I, think, I think we just better start with uh, Ms. Anarchy. Sounds good. Maria? Uh, that's impressive, Michael. I, I was going to ask, like, uh, like, for example, yeah, we all should read the master plan. Are there other documents we should read? Um, like, I guess I don't have that memo, but I should read that. Am it, I, are there yeah. other? <laughs> it's somewhere. Um, um, are there other sort of key reports or studies or any other items? There are a lot of them. Um, I can name some of them now. Of course, there's the transportation plan. There's the open space and recreation plan. There's the housing market study. 
There's the housing production plan. There's the complete streets policy. There's, what else is there? There's the the energy, what did you just say? You it said was the green, I don't know what they green called initiative it. Green initiative that green was just passed by the um, town council. Yeah. Um, okay. You can stop now. So that's why I today suggested maybe a whole list, because I think that's going to be referred to a lot. What has happened and been passed since the last? Um, and then we'll move on to another list of, you know, going through what has actually been accomplished. Um, but a, a part of this is I, I'm tr I want to feel out CRC for what is, what are their expectations. And I've heard from them that, you know, town council, the desires they want to pass and accept the master plan. But some are, at most, are uncomfortable that it's a little old. It's not horribly out of date, but it's not current, especially with our green and transportation issues. So, um, I just want to hear what they're expecting from us. And I think a lot of this is going to be driven by you, Chris, because it's your staff who's going to do the, the bulk of the work. I think it would be helpful maybe at the next meeting for this part if Mr. Morrow could come, since he's the other player in this. Yeah, especially where they seem to want to talk a little bit about the bylaw and just start that introduction. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think. This is about the master plan, and I would really propose, I would urge us to limit the discussion to the master plan and not get it muddied with the zoning bylaw expectations. First things first, and so I would also support, I agree with Michael's suggestion that, that uh, it's premature to have the whole CRC or a lot of them here because I, I, and I would urge that we maintain that this is a planning board meeting not a joint meeting, but they're here, and they're, they're here to, to inform us and to receive our questions so that we can get greater clarity because, you know, if CRC is really just, a, you know, uh, if, if they, it becomes a second, another way for them to express what the town, town council is expressing, that seems to me inefficient. Then why doesn't the town council or, and, and, and so, and so, um, rather than us spending a lot of time reading mat lots of plans where those plans are going to get distilled into this is what was done since the last plan, this is what's resulted, let's get those distillations, let's get those summaries. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go through the transportation plan. I'm just not. Okay. Um, I'm curious about the complete streets policy. I will. You know, it's I'll, much shorter. And, and, and the, 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 the <laughs> document that I would urge us is Chris's PowerPoint presentation summarizing the master plan. Because if, if, if we're talking about necessary and obvious as a way to shortcut some of this in order to present some finishable product in a reasonable time frame, um, then we're, we're working from summaries. We're not working from the original documents. Um, and so, Chris? I just wanted to note that I think that the CRC is not expecting to tell the planning board what to do with the master plan. The CRC is going to act as a kind of intermediary between the planning board and the town council. They're going to try very hard to keep informed about what the planning board is doing with the master plan, and they will share what they learn with the town council. So when the town council eventually has to adopt the master plan, um, it will feel like it's been brought along with the process, because obviously the planning board and the town council, are they have very busy schedules. They can't meet jointly with each other. But the CRC is a way of providing information to town council without you having to meet directly with them. So I think they're not going to tell you what to do. They're wanting to be a kind of a bridge between the planning board and town council. Is that a good explanation, Ms. Gray Mullen? I definitely think it is. I think it's um, they want to know about process because they know they're going to be part of the process. And it's not just. Um, you know, there's the review process. They want to be have updates. 
um, I don't know when we all got this, but if you read her memo, it's, it's clear what she's trying to um, sort of firm up with us. They want uh, a process that's already been like written out how this is going to go. And of course, you know, there's always plan B a little, but this is the intention of how we generate, we update them, we generate more working with the planning department, and then it will come to a point where it, um, we vote on it and then it goes to them and then they're going to like, I don't, it, you have to read, I mean, they could vote on it or not, but they're, then they feed it up to the town council. So, and then just gen, not telling us how to do it, but general expectations is what I'm saying. Like what generally, because I don't even think the town council, you know, is that detail. Or, they haven't read it twice, I doubt. Very few of them, Michael. Um, but, you know, that they want it to be more about green and sustainability and, and, just updated some so they feel better about okaying it. Just, um, David, back to your point, I agree with you right now. I would only really want to be biting off um, the master plan. I feel a little awkward. Um, Janet has left, but she actually came to the CRC meeting, and at the end, um, when she had a time to speak as um, like the public or planning board member, she actually came up and said that she wanted to hear from them on the by law review and what they were thinking and who was driving it. That's fine, but not uh, so, the next meeting. Yeah, so it was, you know, I said it because that's um, what Janet had asked of them, and they said, oh, okay, we can talk about that too. Um, truthfully, I don't know if Chris and Rob are ready to really start brainstorming on the by law review because I think right now we are just trying to figure out the master plan process. Um, so maybe I think Janet will be fine if we put it off for another meeting or two. And I hear you that we'll just have just the chair come because it's mostly about process. And it would be great if everybody could really give her memo a, a read and a think about process so that we can um, give her feedback um, or adjustments that we feel we need. And you too, Chris, I hope you, if this makes sense to you, because you've been through this in a different process. It was town meeting and everything, but. I have been asked to come up with a list of things that I would like to see changed or updated or added to the master plan. If you all, if Michael, particularly if he's read it twice, maybe he has a list of things that he is eager to see changed or updated. And I would appreciate receiving that because you know, I am not, I'm only one person. I can't have universal um, wisdom about <laughs> what should or shouldn't be changed in the master plan. So if you all have thoughts about that, please send them to me. Yeah, please, I would like to know what other people are thinking too. Because um, it's about now, you know, getting a set scope and not making it wider than it has to be, but yet to make it a better document for, what did you say, Chris? It would probably be another six or seven years before a full-blown process would happen again. We'd probably want to have a new master plan in place by 2030, I would think. This one was approved in 2010, so about every 20 years, the new, a new one is done. Um, and so this is a good time to update ours, but we won't start on the new plan until, you know, for another five years at least. So if it was a 2020 plan, does that mean you start like two years earlier? Because I remember it took you'd a have to long start time a the couple last of time. years earlier. Okay. Yeah. And the um, information that I've read about other cities and towns that have done this, it's usually a two year process. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other um, questions one, about the meeting um, for CRC? Yes, Mike. No, I had one question. Uh, it, I, I don't know what the process would be after we presumably we create and sign off on a new master plan. Does that then go to the CRC and they vote on it and pass it on to the planning board? Or do they simply pass it on to the planning board without taking a vote? It's unclear and it actually I wasn't going to get into this but it became a, a little blurry there's problem I mean the charter was written and the charter's not perfect 
um, and they were talking amongst themselves about how the way that the charter was written, it's actually unclear who will, you could actually, Janet brought this up at the um, zoning subcommittee because she was there when they were talking about it, but you could actually have two different like master plans technically approved by um, the town council and by the planning board, which of course should never happen because we want an agreement, you know. Um, so yeah. According to, according to state law, the planning board prepares the master plan and the planning board we've always said adopts. Right. I think the language has been changed to approves and then it goes to the town council to adopt. I think Ms. Henneke was so. just nervous. You know, we want this to have agreement universal and, yeah. right, universal buy-in. So she was just, it had come up. I think they want to make sure that, that's why she's really trying to create this funnel process, that it's very clear that it goes to us, we approve our document and then, um, like you can, um, I'm reading where it says uh, the CRC, what she has here, work request. Yeah, once the council, <coughs> it's just the council, but the CRC um, would sort of vet it out a little bit before sending it um, up to the town council. Yeah, go ahead. I think the working. CRC is going to approve anything? No. I think they're going to absorb all the information and then they're going to make a recommendation to the town council about whether to approve it or not. There's a line here that says the planning board, they want the planning board to regularly inform and again I brought up today, well that needs to be better defined on a timeline, regularly inform the CRC of its work. So I think they're thinking they want to be bringing updates to the town council on where it's at and different changes. Yes, David. In response to that, I would propose that they can attend the relevant meetings. Well, I mean, for instance, yeah. for instance. There you go, you know, but. It, it, the memo, I think, is really, I mean, it is at high level, it's abstract, and, and we can be informed better about what's being imagined. I, I, my expectation is going to still, it's going to remain blurry, um, and, and so we'll, we'll get a sense of the contours of the blur um, come December 18th, and that's one reason why I would, I hope that if there are citizen petitions or business before the board, that that comes first and we handle that before we hear the blur from the CRC. So CR, I just read it, I want to make sure I had it straight how, she, uh, how they are proposing it right now. And it says, so we're working on it. They were asking for us to give or for CRC to come for updates on where the work is at. And then when we say it's done and we vote on it and approve it, it goes actually to the town manager who then submits it to the town council for adoption. And then the council receives the updated approved master plan from the um, planning board through the town manager. And then the council should hold a public meeting prior to referring the updated master plan back to the CRC. And after the public hearing with the CRC and they've re reviewed the master plan, um, they have to determine whether to, to recommend adoption by the council within 45 days. And then upon recommendation of the CRC, the council then shall vote to adopt the master plan. So we don't have, to, you know, I mean, we, we can talk now, but think about this. This is why Ms. Haneke is coming. This is what they've come up with. And well, again, I'm curious about when the trumpeting fanfares <laughs> are done. Is that going to be happen after the town manager, but before the town council approves, and then after the town council approves, but before the public hearing? I just want to know when the momentous pomp and circumstances occur. Maria, I know I'm be I'm being flipped because I, this seems to me to be close to absurd. Right. I, now. I think our trumpet is when we vote on it and approve it. We can blow our trumpet because, as Chris pointed out, according to state statute, it is then the new master plan. 
it's then we step into charter land and they're trying to figure out with their new charter how what was written in the charter gets done after that. So in some ways, I mean, the slippery slope to me is we do a master plan and that's why she has like the update CRC and they're trying to tell town council. We are like, okay, we're done. We've had our public meetings. We've gotten all this input and uh, the, you know, the staff works and we have this new document, we approve it. Then if it goes to CRC, now it has this whole process where people are gonna start questioning again and saying, oh, well, I wanted this or why did this get changed? And my fear is it's just gonna, remember the refer back <laughs> at town council? Like that's what I, we're, as you said, David, I'm worried about us blowing our trumpet saying, yay, it's done, we did a great job, we feel good about this. And then it's coming back to us with questions, concerns, additions, uh, how do we prevent that? Wouldn't there be a, like a draft that would be floated out there to serve the purpose of getting feedback? I mean, there would be to the public. Do we hold CRC or the town council to that too? Uh, you're right. I would rather have their some of like their input on the draft before we actually finalize it and then send it up to the town council to then refer it back to CRC for them to like grind through it. It doesn't seem too sensible. Yes, Michael. Oh, I can't remember the name of the exact committee, but the planning board itself didn't write the uh, master plan. It was written by another committee and then was then approved by the planning board. Are we thinking about using that structure? I think initially it was written by a combination of a consultant and the comprehensive planning committee yeah, among uh, the members was Rob Crowner. Well, the committee, at, at least as listed in the in the current document, is very large. It was very large. I like think it 20 had people, 25 so. to 30 yeah. people in it. And then the um, master plan subcommittee of the planning board took that document and refined it and edited it and spent, I don't know, nine months or so editing it and finally came up with the final plan that was presented to the planning board on in February of 2010, and that was voted on. So it was a long process, but it's true that the planning board did do the final edit with um, subcommittee, and I think citizens were here through the whole thing, making comments. So it was, it was a pretty inclusive process. So w one thing I'm interested in is, is there any glaring problem that people see with the master plan? I think in general, people think the master plan is okay, but they disagree with details. And I would like to have that, if I'm wrong about that, I'd like to have somebody tell me that. Back to that list of documents, goals, ha that has policies that have happened since. Um, even if the correction is just referring to those other documents would be helpful. Like you don't have to take the, you know, the transportation plan is, is, a, is small compared to the master plan, but it's still fairly large and long and detailed to, it would take a really long time just to take, I'm thinking of that one document since I'm familiar with it and update all of the master plan with the concepts in that. Instead, to me, it would be good enough just to at least get it in there as a update referring to it maybe numerous times where it's appropriate in the document. Uh, I was just reading the end of this memo. Uh, this is actually a memo that they're proposing this process and they're asking for our recommendations. Yeah. So I'm wondering, I drew a diagram <laughs> to try to understand the loops that are happening and um, <laughs> I wonder if there's a diagonal instead of, so what happens is it goes PB to TM, town manager, down to town. Yeah, it's like a football play. And, um, but I, um, I guess some of it, yeah, like we were saying, it's part of the charter, so we have to follow some of these steps. But I think, yeah, one of the biggest steps missing is the PB to TM. That probably needs a lot more in there and have some uh, overlap with the CRC so that, like you said, Jack, we're not just sending one version and then saying goodbye to it. We're sort of like, you know, it's iterative. So um, I guess 
Okay, so again, this part here is a little. So Dave Zomek has um, seen this draft and requests was forwarded to Chris yeah. Brestrup to forward to us. So do they want input on the process before we give input about the master plan? Is, is, is that what the point of this memo is? It's more about the process, right? It is more about okay. the process okay. and general expectations of what they're hoping to receive from okay. us in a master plan. So we should organize that before yeah. the 18th and that's what they want to hear from us, it's just that's process. The, she's coming for that. So okay. number three, uh, I, the second line, when it says planning board regularly inform the CRC, mm -hmm. she wrote this, but now listening to all this discussion, mm -hmm. I think that needs to be more rigorous and more detailed. How are we gonna start prepping CRC or town council with what we're doing because I think if we leave them too far out of the process that circular thing you got at the bottom I don't want to see it keep circling because then we can't blow our trumpets I was not that's not what I meant by the trumpet thing my facetiousness I was thinking like done happy done but um, yes I just say something I think that the 18th is an introduction it's an introduction by them to you and by you to them. And it's just the beginning. So I don't think we're expected to have anything definitively written or presented or anything like that. It's just the beginning of a discussion because they've been talking, Ms. Gray Mullen has been talking to Ms. Haneke and Ms. Griesmer, but they wanted to get the full board involved. And so it's an introduction to the process. I, I think it's about setting up next steps. Yeah. For, for everyone and because I, I there is a little bit of they want to get it rolling um, soon after the new year but yes Jack. Uh, to facilitate our review I do encourage you Chris to set up something on you know a, a Google Drive share of those key documents that, that Maria was discussing and it just just so we know what's out there and what you would like us to consider. Is it enough to send an email with links? Yep, that would yep. be great. Yeah. Would you include your summary presentation, your PowerPoint, please? That's a good one. OK, so give it some thought, give it some read. Um, maybe Michael will read it for a third time, um, and we'll uh, carry on on the 18th. I'm going to set a time with them a little bit later. Uh, remind me what we had on the 18th now. Uh, maybe. Okay. So maybe we could say to uh, Mandy Joe, because I don't know, some of them might come anyways is an informal thing, but um, I'll say around 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, so item B under new business is timing of receipt of permit application materials. Um, I'm going to table this till another time because I know this was Janet was really the one who wanted to speak on this and she's not here. Um, C topics not anticipated. Chris, do we? Okay, great. C, uh, item seven form A A and R subdivision applications. Yes. <gasps> Yay! Uh, number eight upcoming ZBA applications. Nothing new. Oh. Mary, okay. Uh, nine upcoming SPP, SPR, um, SUB applications. I do know of one new thing, which is that uh, Mr. Robleski, who came to you on 362 Main Street, um, has had um, some thoughts about changing his project and um, wants to come and show those changes to you. He's going to apply for a site plan review application mm -hmm. to make some changes. Um, so that'll be coming up probably in January. Okay, thank you. Item um, 10, Planning Board Committee and Liaison Reports, PVPC. So the next meeting is, uh, and I don't have an agenda, but it's December 12th. Um, at the same time, the state of the town mm -hmm. <laughs> announcement, but that's fine. But I, I do have a feeling that I'm going to be asked to, or the, the, the commission is going to be asked to, to vote on this 40R smart growth zoning district uh, proposal and 
basically it's that the smart growth zoning district or starting home uh, zoning district ordinances or bylaws would be adopted by a simple majority of all members of the town council or the city council um, as opposed to you know the super majority so that that's kind of the game plan and I again I'm, I'm, I'm there speaking on behalf of uh, the town and I really do I vote my you know what I my conscience is or you know I, yes Jack did reach out to me about this and I passed his question on to the town manager as to whether the town council would give him any uh, advice and I have not heard back um, so if they and the don't the 12th you think I, I, I haven't seen the agenda but okay. it was it was presented and and it, it was just continued mm -hmm. so but I, I'm, I'm leaning toward uh, voting uh, to you know simple majority for this because of the housing is such an urgent situation for the state Maria I think isn't that in the bill 3507 is, is what um, governor yes. is proposing yes. Yeah. Yes. yes yeah okay yeah an act an act to promote housing choices mm -hmm. yeah simple title okay thank you um, Community Preservation Act Committee, Michael. Uh, we've had no meeting since the last meeting. Okay. Uh, David Agricultural Commission. No meeting yet. Great, uh, Michael, DRB. Nothing to report there. And zoning subcommittee we already did. Report of chair, I have nothing. Report of staff. I don't have anything. <laughs> um, so then adjournment, a motion, please. And thank you Amherst Media.